I normally don't review computer software because I don't find it very interesting unless of course it's probably going to make a difference and help other people but I just had to get this on video I found this at the thrift store PC Essentials 19 Standard 2.0 which is a bit cryptic 20 programs on two DVDs and this was one of many software packages that you would get when buying a brand new computer from HSN or QVC and apparently this must have come with an Acer computer of some sort I'd like to know which one it can't be all that old because the copyright date on here if I'm not mistaken is from a relatively yep, 2010 PC Treasures Incorporated this is their website PCTreasures.com you can see they mention here of their OEM software bundles, accessories, fulfillment services, and much more. So essentially they act as a, as a sort of um, way to sweeten the deal of new electronic items such as tablets or laptops or computers when buying them new from certain retailers, again, such as HSN or QVC. So looking on this PC Essentials disc here. You get two discs with some serial number inserts. You get 20,000 notebook games, AquaZone, digital scrapbook, and some other programs that are pretty useful, such as Print Shop, Photo Plus, Thunderbird Email, which is free if I'm not mistaken, as is Sunbird Calendar. But I'm going to be focusing on Easy Video Editor 3.0 says it's designed for beginners, easy enough for everyone, and has an intuitive piece of software. is $39.99. Apparently it's currently sold out. It says it's easy to import and split, add effects, publish your video, and ideal for beginners. Users will find it surprisingly easy to edit their video files. Okay, we're going to test that theory. You can see it's right there on the second disc here. And just insert it. Okay, we get some custom splash screen here. I want to install Easy Video Editor. And it's not taking my mouse click. Maybe the software crashed. Okay, it wants to install Windows Media Format 9 runtime files. So I guess I should install that if it makes it work. Just got it installed now. Created an icon on our desktop, and this looks like it's the video editor. Okay. So I guess we have to get our footage from somewhere. I uh, guess I'll just import it from, from something. I can't use the USB, the USB slot that's on this side of the computer. You can see the ThinkPad took a fall. This was uh, several months ago and it fell down. Flight of stairs actually and broke the whole USB port. So if you plug anything into it, it doesn't work and this whole area is broken. But the USB ports over here work. So I just have a Vividar card reader and an SD card with the video file I just recorded. Looks like Winamp is misidentifying the video file. It thinks it's a mod audio file and not the uh, MPEG-2 file. So we'll drag this in. This file format is not valid. This stupid card reader write protects the media so you can't write to the SD card when it's inserted into the stupid card reader. You have to copy and paste it first because you see if I try to modify the file name now it's going to tell me it can't because the disk is write protected even though the write protect tab on the SD card is not activated. Okay, I think it's doing so. Okay, it imported the video so it can import MPEG-2 video files but you have to use a program like SD copy to rename them from their native MOD file extension to MPG. Canon FS200 Okay, it's got the aspect ratio wrong, and there's no way for you to to change that. Maybe you have to go into your menu. New project. 
No, that doesn't let you change it. Well, you get different inputs up here. You can import a file from a DV or HDV source or an analog source. Well, that's stupid. It doesn't allow you to change the aspect ratio. So if you record it in 16 by 9, it's just going to be squished to 4 by 3. But we'll subscribe to their philosophy at least for now. It says intro title. Maybe we have to click this. Maybe it's not working. Okay, you have to drag the video file first and then you should be able to go in here and I think you can change the text that way how do we change that? It says my title, that's not what I want and that doesn't work how are you supposed to change the title? oh fantastic, the program locked up on me, no wonder it wasn't responding completely locked up Oh, looks like I'm going to have to use Task Manager. And there's proof that I was not responding. Let's try that again. Import the video. Okay. No, I don't want to import from a DV camcorder. So they want you to drag this here. But it doesn't... It just locked up again. Not responding. Apparently there's something about the MPEG-2 video files that the Canon standard definition camcorder that I have produces that's creating problems and causing the whole program to crash. So just to test that it's not the the it's the format causing the problem, I downloaded it just a okay, can't support MP4. Well, let's see what it can support. Well, it claims to be able to support MPEG video files. And this doesn't make any sense either. When you go to capture video, it gives you an option to switch between 4x3 and 16x9. But when you go into your project settings, there's no way to set the project to 16x9. It's just 4x3. And clicking these magic wand icons, which you would think would allow you to add special effects or something, doesn't do anything. It just doesn't do anything at all. Well, maybe you have to go to the next stage. Okay, you have add effects. Okay, now how, this is how you must go about adding titles. Let's see here. Okay, drag that in. Did it take it? Okay, now we can change it. Okay, so I did add the title. And then you have effects here, which I want the title to fade in. I think that just added a fade in effect. Okay, these must be effects that you apply, but if you want it to fade in or fade out, you have to use an effect. And then the transition we use. We drag this one here and drag this one here. And we'll change this title as well. And you have some animations here that I guess you can't change. It says wipe. How do you change it? You just have some settings here. But you can't, I don't think you can change the animation of it. Maybe you have to go back and, okay. So you have to, let's see, let's pick this one. Oh yeah, we have to drag it onto the clip again. And then click this green thing. I Yeah, that worked. Okay, the end. How do we change the background color? I don't think we can. I don't know what this thing does, just maybe how long the trans the, the effect takes. Okay, that looks like an epic fail. You can't change the background color apparently. It's permanently stuck on blue. So you can change the text color, the shadow color, and the outline color. You cannot, however, change the background color. It's stuck on blue, so it looks like the, the default title font and theme that was used in the uh, Windows XP version of Movie Maker, Movie Maker 2.6. And we'll add a, an effect to our video. So... I think it's, yeah, it's playing now. Okay, why did our title just disappear like that? Yeah, I think it should have had a transition. 
Okay, so you go about doing transition effects and titles. You don't have that option available immediately. This is, I guess, just where you assemble everything. And then you use these arrows down here, right below this inconveniently placed exit button. Which is kind of redundant because there's an X right up here. That's what everyone's going to want to click. You click this, then you have these options. Let's go to next. By default, I guess it wants to export to DVD. What's this one? Burn. Disk information. Disk settings. So you have these buttons up here. Create chapter. Select theme. Background image and music. Let's see what themes they have. Oh, green space. Lizard. Let's do lizard. Okay. Okay. Now, I didn't see that before. It's defaulted to DVD. This is published video file, YouTube, iPod, PlayStation Portable. I'll do file. And you only have five output options. MPEG 1, 2, DVA, DVAVI, AVI, and WMV. None of which are really the best. Okay. I guess I'll do M WM. No, that's no good. I guess MPEG 2 will have to do. Wow. Really moving on up. Audio compression bitrate, 112 kilobits per second. I'm no audiophile, but I think that's going to sound like garbage. Whatever, we'll just export this to... No, I don't want to export to the stupid program's directory. I want to save it to the desktop. Test. Save. Okay, that's taking a while. That's not even that long of a video. It's probably only 10 seconds. No, excuse me, it's only 14 seconds. Played successfully. There's our MPEG file. It did render it progressive, so I wonder how, well, I wonder how good it, its deinterlacing is, but of course I couldn't get it to work with the MPEG-2 video files from just a regular standard definition camcorder. Writing library, honest technology. Okay, so it did export the video at a decent bit rate, 5,000 kilobits per second, which I would have had it a bit higher, but it did it to 4x3. Again, I don't believe there's any way to change it to 16x9. And get ready for audio file quality, folks. 112 kilobits per second. Okay, why did the blue background just disappear like that? That's not supposed to happen. That should have stayed blue the whole time. And that text has some awful aliasing going on right now. And what use is there if you can't even change the aspect ratio of the video and you're forced into exporting 4x3 video files when people are usually using... when there's a vast majority of people that are using 16x9 camcorders. And we're not even talking about HD video either. This is standard definition video. Okay, it must be... at least it works somewhat now. I don't know what I did to get it to work, but now it's working, yeah. so... We'll try exporting that again. And again, I don't know why it's exporting a 640x480 when it was a 16x9, 720x480 video. Completed successfully. Got the MPEG video file. Let's see how that came out now. Canon FS200, Easy Video Editor 3.0, video test. Okay, that audio sounds terrible. So we'll see if it can deinterlace this properly. How the quality looks. And it's using blend field deinterlacing. It's not doing a very good job either. That's a lot of ghosting. And the video just cut. Now why does this video cut out before it goes to black? It just stops, but if you remember the last one we did, the title faded away and it went to black halfway through, so what's up with the discrepancy? And if you absolutely must have this program, you can get it on Amazon.com as a digital download or as a disc 
for $34.99. And this person had the same problem that I did. It doesn't import MOV files. Well, I guess I'm a bit more fortunate than them because they claim that half the features are blacked out even though they entered in the serial key. The copy of Windows Movie Maker that's been sitting on your computer unused is probably more capable than this joke of a piece of software. Easy Video Editor 3.0. So if you want my honest review of Honest Tech's Easy Video Editor 3.0, now you know what I'm going to be doing with that disc.